Hi, everybody. In this video, it's going to be Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. This is the prediction as of October 2023. A lot of stuff could change. It's not even for sure going to be these two. But right now, this seems like the most likely matchup. If you've seen my other videos, I've said pretty much everything that could be said about these two. So I don't want to go on and on about it. But this is the matchup that most people don't want. The electorate does not want Biden. They think he's too old. There's a lot of concern out there about the economy and the border. And they think he's corrupt, but less so than Trump. Now with Trump, they do think he's more corrupt, more of a threat to democracy. He's extremely polarizing and bad for the presidency. Now those are just a few of the negatives about each of them. As for positives with Biden, the best thing he has going for him is his name is not Donald Trump. Some people do say he's extremely progressive. Other people say he's a corporate sellout. You're going to get everything on all sides. The positives about Trump, he at least comes off as willing to go after the permanent political establishment, shake up the system. That I think is his biggest appeal. So without going on a huge speech, I think it's going to come down to, is there going to be more hidden Trump vote out there or more hidden anti-Trump vote out there? I don't think there's much pro-Biden vote. It's really going to all come down to Donald Trump. Some of the polls right now show Trump in the lead or very close, but in more than a year out, we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe Trump gets convicted. Maybe Biden's mental decline exacerbates. There's endless situations you could come up with. This is a difficult prediction. We've seen polls underestimate Trump before. Maybe they do it again, but the midterms might underestimate the anti-Trump vote as well as the pro-abortion vote. And then we also have to consider mail-in balloting. If Trump embraces it next time, there could be some more votes out there that he didn't pick up last time. Plus all the normal issues on economics and culture, both of them are going to have different strengths and weaknesses. Let's start filling out this map. And for this particular matchup, we're going to start with the safe states first. It's going to be all the usual ones. I would say these are at least 50% likely to be over 10 point margins. It's the normal coasts of blue with Illinois in the middle plus Hawaii. And if we do the safe Republican states, those are going to be all the typical ones as well. I don't see a place like Montana, Utah, or Kansas getting under 10. So unless something dramatic happens, which it could, these are the states I think are going to go blue and red. Now, I'm not someone who thinks Trump has no chance or Biden has no chance. I think they both have a chance. I think it's going to be very, very close and anything could happen. You're going to emphasize different things on your map. I'm trying to block out all the noise, even everything out and actually make a call on all of these states instead of leaving them as toss ups. Now let's go through the rest of these states. First, we'll do the likely states for the Democrats. These will be between five and 10 points. First is going to be New Mexico. I could understand putting it at safe. For this, I'm going to bump it down slightly to likely. Next, we're going to do Minnesota. Trump almost won it in 2016, ended up not being so close in 2020. Maybe it does go back and get close. But for this, we're going to say it's over five. In the Northeast, we've got New Hampshire. Like New Mexico, that also could get over 10. Trump did get super close here in 2016. But to be fair, on an average night, I'm going to say it's in high single digits for Biden. Last likely for Biden is going to be Virginia. This is another one. It could get over 10. It's much closer to safe than leans. We will put it at likely. Now, the likely states for the Republicans. First, let's do Alaska. This could easily go over 10. This is not a state that adores Trump. They have ranked choice voting now. In the end, Trump should still carry it. I don't think there's much controversy in that. But to be slightly cautious, I'm going to put it down to likely. Next state, Texas. I think everybody wants to see the trends in this state in South Texas, as well as the suburbs around Houston, Dallas, Austin. Maybe the leftward trends accelerate and it gets down to a lean. Or maybe the economy is so bad, Trump outperforms and he wins it by 10. I'm going to split the difference and say it's likely. Next, Iowa. This could also go over 10. We saw the recent polling there, showed it into double digits, but that might be a little bit premature. We're going to put that at likely. Next, Ohio. This is another one, probably closer to safe than to leans. This is a state where they're going to like Trump, he's going to get that by a likely. We also have Maine second in the corner. Now, the state at large could possibly get down to likely for Biden, but in that second district, Trump has had success here. He could hit 10 with it, but in this, we're going to say it's likely. The last likely state for Trump, we've got Florida. I can't imagine this going safe, given that it was only about three and a half for Trump last time. Yes, the midterms were a bloodbath for the Democrats there, but I want to see how far those trends are going to go after one more election. But I don't think there's much debate that Trump is going to win the state. Some of you might even have it as a leans. I'm going to put this at mid single digits likely for Trump. So now we've got seven states left plus Nebraska's second. And this is where the whole election is going to be won or lost. Let's go down to the lean states for the Democrats. These are under a five point margin, but still at least one point. 
point, and this is going to be where a lot of debate comes in, everything is going to affect these margins. Things like the economy, the running mate, any scandals or health issues, even a half a point could be critical in these states. So first for Biden, I've got to say Arizona. The trends have just not been there for the Republicans here. It's a state that likes establishment Republicans. That's not Trump. There's certainly little to no enthusiasm for Biden, but that might be enough for him to win it. I do think he would win it probably by about a point or so. It doesn't mean Trump can't win it. He absolutely could win it. But trying to consider all factors, I got to give it to Biden. And we've also got Nebraska second. That I think is more favorable to Biden. He's going to win it by a two or three point lean margin. Next, we're going to say Michigan. This is another one. Like all of these states, either side could win it. Trump could claim Michigan. I think it's just a little bit more likely that Biden wins it at this point. Last lean for Biden is going to be Georgia. The Atlanta suburbs could be insurmountable for Trump. The midterms the Republicans had there probably give Trump a little bit of hope, but he would have to thread the needle there to carry it. As of right now, I think it's more likely that Biden wins it by one to two points, but that is completely within the margin of error. Trump could even end up winning this by a couple of points. Now there's four states left. Let's start with North Carolina. That is going to go tilt for Trump. It could hit one or two points. It's possible Biden could flip it. I think it's a little bit more likely that Trump holds on to it. Now the last three states, I think you could flip a coin. But first, we're going to go to Pennsylvania, and that is going to go tilt for Biden. The midterms there have to give Democrats a lot of hope. Trump could win this thing. We know he's going to do great in Western PA and in the T. There might be some voters he could pick off in the Northeast. But the Philadelphia suburbs, that's the problem for Trump. Bucks, Montgomery, Chester County. I have a little bit harder of a time picturing him doing better in those counties, but I'm definitely open to Trump being able to flip the state. Next, Nevada. That's also going to be a tilt for Biden. That would be a slight improvement for Trump in the state, but to be cautious, I'm going to keep it blue in this matchup. The last state, that's going to be Wisconsin. That's kind of emerged as the new big swing state, both of them capable of winning it. I really don't know which way it would go. Now the suburbs around Milwaukee, the Wow counties, they're still redder than a lot of other suburban counties, but the trends don't look great for the Republicans. Now there's other counties in the state that are still light blue or light red. Those are in the Driftless area the northwest and the southwest part of the state. And it seems like those are the kind of voters that are more likely to come around to Trump. They probably put him over the top in 2016. They could do it again if he could get the turnout. So I think this is completely up in the air. In the end, somebody's going to win it by a tilt. I'm not going to do a toss-up, even though I would consider it a toss-up. I'm going to throw this one to Donald Trump. So right now, the final map is 293 for Biden, 245 for Trump. So Biden with a small advantage in the Electoral College. Five or six of these states could absolutely go either way. A lot can and probably will change over the next 12 months. I'll try to update this periodically. We still haven't really started the primaries. A lot of voters are not going to tune into politics until next summer or after. At that point, if Trump is out there campaigning and he's in the spotlight every day, that could animate voters to turn out against him. There's going to be new voters that weren't 18 in the last election. I would tend to think they would support Biden. We know abortion, that's going to help the Democrats. But the border and crime, certain education education issues. Those are going to help Trump. I definitely don't think it's just enough for Biden to run on abortion. Trump is bad and the economy is good. The third party vote, that's going to be another factor. We've got the Greens, Libertarians, potentially no labels. Who knows about the ballot access and how that's going to turn out. We're going to have to take a look at the polling. We have to see some debates. We have to see who Trump would pick as a running mate. There's just so many factors to consider. The last thing to mention is the media. Most of the mainstream media, I think, is going to be for Biden. He's going to get a lot of celebrity support. There's not going to be much positive to say about Trump. It's not going to be balanced. He was able to get it done in 16, narrowly lost in a unique election in 20. 24 is a complete toss up. There's bound to be a couple of surprises, but I think it's hard to say this is not going to be an extremely close election capable of being won by either side. So I don't want to go on forever about this. I could easily make a case for Trump flipping a couple of these states and winning it. And I know the polling is close right now, but in trying to guess what will happen next year, I think Biden is a very slight favorite. The Trump fatigue will kick in. There's going to be so much opposition to Trump. They're not going to want to let him near that White House again. It is going to be ugly. Whoever loses, they're not going to take it well. It's going to be totally unbelievable for each side to see the other side win. But I have no confidence of this prediction. I would not bet any money on it. But I would say Biden probably has about a 52 to 53 percent chance of winning. It's practically a coin flip, but I had to come up with something. This is the map I settled on. Let me know in the comments.
what do you think about this matchup? Do you agree with this map or do you have a different take? Do you see Trump doing a lot better? Do you see Biden doing even better? What do you think are going to be the big factors that are going to tip this either way? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.